Hello and welcome to our S1 Cloud Expertise Service Group Reporting for S1 Cloud, the public edition. So welcome back our friends. And today we are very lucky to have our two expert panels for the, the very famous group reporting areas. And, and hello again, welcome back to our uh, community live sessions, which we created for you, our partners, to have an open discussion with all our subject matter um, experts from SAP internally, and also a chance that you can discuss with your peers in other partner companies. And we would very appreciate it that you can post any questions in our Q&A sections and to also open mic to discuss and share your project experience with us. Without further ado, I'd like to move on to have you to meet really our experts. So I'll lend first to you. Hi, thanks. Hi, thanks, Li Ling. And um, good morning, I suppose. And maybe good good afternoon uh, to to some of the folks uh, from you know, from the the states. My name is Elin Xu. I'm from the S4 HANA Engineering Group um, on group reporting right now, and I'm with SAP for over twenty years. Um, starting as a FICO uh, consultant, yeah, in ERP, and then gradually I move on to my core. The domain um competence uh, on on consolidation, uh, starting with BCS, uh, same BCS consolidation, and then into the analytics area in BW. And now in Google reporting, I'm mainly supporting the uh, strategic customer projects on um adoption and also uh, co innovation. And I'm very glad to have the chance today to meet you folks and also to, to share the news and also gather your project experience uh, with the help of my colleagues. So I think uh, I can hand it to Eloy to talk about himself. Thank you. I'm uh, head of the one. I'm Eloy de la Roche. Very exciting to participate to this, uh, to this experience for the first time. Uh, I would be glad, glad to share my own experience. Uh, I'm a principal consultant in EMEA uh, based in France. Um, I have about 25 years of experience in consolidation mainly and 16 years with SAP, working with SAP financial consolidation with BPC and translating to the cloud uh, along with the SAP strategy. I know uh, working on group reporting and group reporting data collection. Um, and uh, also in this part, uh, not only implementing uh, the product uh, of clients, uh, but also being a trainer for firms uh, on all the communications we have in PR. And uh, well, I will uh, try to answer um, all the questions you may have. Uh, hopefully, for the best. Thank you so much. I am um, so. Um, this is Lillian. Uh, many of you might know me well, like I'm coming from the expertise service team. I've been in the finance area actually um, around 15 years now, like starting from the product engineering and then to um, this expertise services. I've been looking and um, acting sometimes as consultant in the project and sometimes overlook our partner project. So I uh, really appreciate that you, your time here and then move on to our um Beauty Crystal. <laughs> Thanks, Lilin. So my name is Crystal. Uh, a warm welcome to you all for the group reporting community live session. Um, and I've worked with various cloud products, starting from cloud for and expense, and currently working with the expertise services team um, on on the finance lobby. So I wish um, and I hope we'll have an active participation. And there's a lot of takeaway for you. at the end of the session. Uh, um, so let's move on to the next slide and thank you. Hello and welcome to our S1 Cloud expertise service group reporting for S1 Cloud, the public edition. So welcome back our friends. And today we are very lucky to have our two expert panels for the, the very famous group reporting areas. And, and hello again, welcome back to our uh, community live sessions, which we created for you, our partners, to have an open discussion with all our subject matter um, experts from SAP internally, and also a chance that you can discuss with your peers in other partner companies. 
And we would very appreciate it that you can post any questions in our Q&A sections and to also open mic to discuss and share your project experience with us. Without further ado, I'd like to move on to have you to meet really our experts. So I'll lend first to you. Hi, thanks. Hi, thanks, Li Ling. And um, good morning, I suppose. And maybe good good afternoon uh, to to some of the folks uh, from you know, from the the states. My name is Elin Xu. I'm from the S4 HANA Engineering Group um, on group reporting right now, and I'm with SAP for over twenty years. Um, starting as a FICO uh, consultant, yeah, in ERP, and then gradually I move on to my core. The domain um competence uh, on on consolidation, uh, starting with BCS, uh, some BCS consolidation, and then into the analytics area in BW. And now in Google reporting, I'm mainly supporting the uh, strategic customer projects on um adoption and also uh, co innovation. And I'm very glad to have the chance today to meet you folks and also to, to share the news and also gather your project experience uh, with the help of my colleagues. So I think uh, I can hand it to Eloy to talk about himself. Thank you. I'm uh, hello everyone. I'm Eloy de la Roche. Very exciting to participate to this, uh, to this experience for the first time. Uh, I would be glad, glad to share my own experience. Uh, I'm a principal consultant in EMEA uh, based in France. Um, I have about 25 years of experience in consolidation mainly and 16 years with SAP, working with SAP financial consolidation with BPC and translating to the cloud uh, along with the SAP strategy. I know uh, working on group reporting and group reporting data collection. Um, and uh, also in this part, uh, not only implementing uh, the product uh, of clients, uh, but also being a trainer for firms uh, on all the communications we have in PR. And uh, well, I will uh, try to answer um, all the questions you may have. Uh, hopefully, for the best. Thank you so much. I am um, so. Um, this is Lillian. Uh, many of you might know me well, like I'm coming from the expertise service team. I've been in the finance area actually um, around 15 years now, like starting from the product engineering and then to um, this expertise services. I've been looking and um, acting sometimes as consultant in the project and sometimes overlook our partner project. So I uh, really appreciate that you, your time here and then move on to our um Beauty Crystal. <laughs> Thanks, Lilin. So my name is Crystal. Uh, a warm welcome to you all for the group reporting community live session. Um, and I've worked with various cloud products, starting from cloud for and expense, and currently working with the expertise services team um, on on the finance lobby. So I wish um, and I hope we'll have an active participation. And there's a lot of takeaway for you at the end of the session. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. And thank you. Thank you so much. So actually, before we move on, really, um, just some ground rules before uh, before us to go to a very exciting discussions. Firstly, this is a pure partner discussion. There's no customer that is in here, so be safe. But actually, while you were telling about your project issues, do, do cautious that do not uh, call it out the names. And then here are two buttons that you should be familiar with with yourself. Firstly, there's a and a sections where you can just type in your questions. And we will just follow on the sequences to pick up the questions that you just posted. And then we will have our panelists um, to answer your question live and also to show if possible a system demo that suits. And the second button that you should be familiar with yourself is open mic. Why we would uh, ask, you know, if the question's not so clear, we want you to provide more details on the backgrounds. And if you want to join a discussion, like, okay, I want to really share my experience for these questions, we are all welcomed. So just use these two buttons, post in a question or open mic to share your experience, your questions with these two. And then this is not really on the product support. So if you have any bugs, do use our service now to create incidents or to create a case, okay? So, and um, as has been moving on, as has been already listed in our 
registration pages, there are a few sessions. That is why we are so so confident to have only a Q and A sessions with you because there are already ground of um, sessions that we have recorded, long speeches with demos on what exactly the standard process is, like how uh, we want to do an um, simulation ledgers, how we do our intercompany in matches. There are already sessions and we have already put those links in our registration link. I hope that you got all the chances to visit it so that you are not you know, new to the topics and then you can also more understand what are the discussions we have today. In case of not, you always get the link after the afterwards and you can familiarize yourself later. And then quickly jump to our what you will take out of session. Community life is still like um, Christelle, if you can move on. Community life is the one that you want to um, to have the discussion with our experts. So what you will get out of the sessions really like you will get information from our product managers to uh, to highlight uh, what are the new features. You will get our Alan to talk Alan to talk about the conducting experience to share some experience if you pose a question that is related. And also this time we have a very special opportunity for you because our product our manager here is very open to all of you. We will have a quick quick poll in the middle or at later point that you can vote and you can also type it all, what are the important backlogs you think we should put, put, put there. And we will also, you got a chance really to influence our roadmap. Okay, stop talking here. Hand over Alan for um, the quick demo, uh, the quick introductions of the new features and a few highlights from your side. Thank you so much. We we can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks now, everyone. Go, yeah. go ahead. Thanks, Living. I just I just like to spend the first couple of minutes um sharing about the the news coming from the product side, um especially on twenty three oh eight. So as you can see that uh, there are a couple of enhancements on the existing features or tools, um on the list here, and uh, we're not going to really detail every single one of them. However, um I could I could share with you that. Um, with 2308, the highlight in terms of the core functions yeah, in Google reporting will be the enhancement and also delivery of the, um, the elimination rules for the uh, change of consolidation methods. Like if you have a scenario where you change between the um, purchase and equity method, then um, let's say the product starting in 2308 is equipped with a couple of um, new rules that you could use uh, as a reference. So that will be something that really strikes at the core of the, let's say, consolidation coming out in 2308. And in addition to that, we also, um, in response to a lot of, um, let's say, requests from the customers, uh, we also add the, the functions on the goodwill in local currency, especially for the activity-based uh, COI. Yeah, if, if customers are using it. And then we also enhance the elimination rule uh, using reclassification by adding condition. And we also add more features you know, on the report. However, I think you can see more details. If you, for example, uh, click on the, the first link. Um, uh, should I do that? Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, so I, I like to keep I like to remind you to keep this uh, let's say community link, yeah, this SAP, I think SAP community link handy because with each release, we will basically post um let's say a new release block. And then in this release block, release block, if you click on the first link, um the blue one, exactly, it will take you to a let's say a slide deck, um, let's say to illustrate, you know, those features. Um, that we release for you know for let's say twice now twice a year maybe in the future you know if we really continue with this uh, feature based uh, cloud release we might release this um, let's say this feature deck so if, for example if you scroll down the this uh, PDF you could see a lot of let's say graphic illustration yeah of the new features 
And uh, sometimes it could be very, very big. Yeah, it might be a bit uh, overwhelming. Some, some, I think you can, you can, you know, pick. Let's say your, you know, what, what, what's really concerning or interesting right, or relevant for your project. So I think I like to, I like you to keep this information really handy, uh, per each cloud release. So you can, you know, have a view into, let's say, the the, the new features. And if we go back to, let's say, to the slide. Uh, there is another link. This, going back to the slide, there is a second link that points to the exactly our uh, consulting notes. Uh, I have to admit that this consulting note is getting a bit too long. However, it it, it contains uh, up to date yeah information, especially for I think for the technical uh, people or for consultants. Um, if they have let's say, any any kind of um, questions related to, for example, how to set up um, like uh, preparation ledger, yeah, how to uh, implement proportional consolidation, Th these sort of questions, um, <clears throat> I think this consulting note again is is something that um, you should um, somehow um, you know have a, have a have a look into it, yeah, you know, constantly to to keep you up to date. Uh, with, with the let's say the new product features and especially, uh, Larissa, if you could click on the attachments, Krisa, if you could click on the attachment further up, further up, ooh, ooh, up. Should I do that? Um, this one, um, Eileen. So there's a tab called attachment, or okay. if you can scroll down. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So here, uh, if you scroll down further down, should I, yeah, please. Thank you. So here, as you could see, like for example, the last one, yeah, the last one contains a list of uh, let's say the delivered rules or content embedded in the best practice content uh, that we ship per each re release. And then the second to the last is also related to what I mentioned earlier about you know the change or consolidation method. Um, so there is a very, very good uh, write-up you know, from, from our, um, let's say, colleagues uh, on, let's say, all the, let's say, the tricks and, and, and tips on how to implement, yeah, the, you know, if you have a case uh, where the subsidiaries were divested uh, to some extent, or if, uh, let's say, you increase the ownership uh, to change from the equity to the, let's say, the purchase um, uh, consultation. So that's something that is quite new because we just put it out, I think about a month ago. So this is also something that uh, I think you can have a look into it. And also, I think one last thing before I close this uh, this part of the, the, the session is the, let's say the third, yeah, from the last scenarios for rule-based consolidation investment. This will give you a very, very clear insight into how the consolidation investment, you know, all the things related to ownership, to um, let's say to 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 goodwill handling, yeah, to let's say um, the divestiture or let's say increase, yeah, in in your investment, how does it handle? How is it handled in good reporting? And how could you set it up? So this is again a very very useful how to that I like to kind of highlight, you know, just upfront here. So basically, I think. But uh, the the takeaway yeah, from my short talk hopefully is that there are there's at least useful information that will be very handy thing for your project. So please keep them handy. And I think I think that's basically what I like to share. Is there any question right now? Yes. So uh, thank you so much, Alan. I think yeah. Um, pause here a bit because we do have a pre submit questions to our address. But at the same time, it is really your sessions, your chance to talk and to to really have a face-to-face -face call with our expert. Please do take the time to open the Q&A but button that is now down below and you can paste your questions there. So far, we don't see anything there, but I think that you are taking time to copy and paste your prepared questions. <laughs> That is our normal experience as well. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. And with that, maybe we um, take the first sub pre submitted questions on and on the pages and the links that the two links that are link shared one on the blocks. What is one uh, the 2308 general release features has been shared into the group 
Oh, Jan, Jan, thank you so much for posting the question. Can you maybe not, instead of using chat, but use a Q and A. Reasons behind it, that chat, we can't really concentrate on which, which answer has been already, which question has been already answered and whom to pick up this one. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. But yes, maybe Alain, if you can take the first one, I think at least we, got, uh, we have already a, a poll there. People please okay. use the Q and A section. So the first question, please, um, please take ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's a very, very basic and important um, question yeah, for all of you um, that have to implement the solution. Um, we, we do deliver uh, best practice content, including a wide range of um, let's say objects or rules or attributes. But then your question might be that, how can I see it? Um, let me just show you quickly. can share my screen here. Yeah. So I hope you could see, you could see yes, my screen. Yes, we can see your screen now. Yeah, and I think to as I start with, sorry, I need to. Let me come back to that consulting note um, that we just saw a few seconds ago. You see here uh, at the bottom of the attachment, yeah, this very last one, we always deliver the most recent um, let's say version of all the delivery contents you know, in the Excel file. That's just as a reference for you to, to know exactly you know, what's new that is coming yeah, with, the, let's say, with each, each new re release. And, and um, if you quickly uh, look into it, it's a very, very, it contains a lot of information. Do you see it? Huh? Let me try again. Okay. So you see that there are, there are quite a few tabs here, yeah, divided by different let's say different subject, like an overview, right, of all the contents. By the way, this list is a let's say it is a comprehensive list. So it's not just just a delta list of you know new let's say new content. So here you could see as up to um as until 2308, you could see that we deliver, for example, these basically these these subjects, yeah, different versions, master data, and also the if you go to each tab here, yeah, you can see what are the versions that you should be able to see after you install uh, for example, one SG. Yeah, this uh, best practice, one of the best practice content in the system. And you should be able to see, for example, these versions and also the properties Yeah, coming along with these versions. And, and I think uh, another thing you could see, for example, things that are more related uh, to the elimination rules, for example, all the selection objects. You know that you need the selection objects uh, to be embedded right in your elimination um, rule in order to trigger like your IC elimination, your consolidation investment entry and all that. So so these selection objects are also shipped and also visible in the system. And by the way, these deliver contents um, can be used to go live. However, most customers, of course, as you might know, just use it as a reference. And then they can copy them right into their own copy objects, and then just kind of modify the copy right, by adding, for example, adding more dimensions or removing some unnecessary um, setup, and then go live with their copy. So I think um, the, these are the let's say the basic um, uh, information right on on the best practice content. And if you want to, you might wonder how how do I see in the system. Um, some of you might also have experience that like if you go to here, I'm in the, I'm, I'm wondering if I could, okay, let me just move it. <laughs> so I'm in a, our demo environment, yeah, that actually mirrors um, almost uh, customers uh, live live system. So um, if you have the, the right, let's say the, the authorized authorization, right, to, to do this configuration, you can go to this, uh, let's say the implementation copy, right? And then the manage your solution. 
And then right underneath, yeah, under this manage your solution, it includes let's say all the configuration objects shipped uh, in S4 HANA. And if you filter it, I think I need to do it slowly because there's a time lag, maybe it's through the, the Zoom. So if you filter it, okay, yeah. Hmm, interesting. I think there is a, there's a time lag. I can't really click. Um, okay, let me, let me try again, yeah. So try that, finance. If you go to finance. Now let's do one more try, and then, if not, then I think I think we can uh we can pause here. Yeah. If and then if you select corporate close. I think somehow through the Zoom. I wonder if this happened before. Through Zoom. Okay, now, it works. Let's just be a bit more patient. And then I select corporate. Where's corporate close? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. There you go. So here you can see that these are all the configuration uh, objects, rules for Google reporting. And if you, I say branch them, yeah, further down, you can see all these details. Like, um, for example, I want to check the global setting to see, you know, what's my, um, let's say, current situation for using, let's say, the prep ledger. So in this demo environment, we, we is set up, let's say, for 2024, yeah, yeah as the first uh, year for implementing the prep ledger because it takes them time to kind of migrate into you know, the existing um, accounting, yeah, accounting data and all that. So this is, this is one example. Yeah, one one let's say um entry path to the let's say the best practice content that we saw earlier right, on on that Excel sheet. So and then uh, you can explore it further. Right, there are other rules uh, also embedded into this um you know this we call it S S C U I yeah self um I think self service yeah configuration content. So I hope this addresses the let's say the question. Um, to some extent. Do you want to know more about the best practice content? Okay, thank you so much, Alan. I think I saw that we have uh, really have the break here, like to listen to you, what are the best practices? And also like it happens to have a really similar, uh, the, the, the questions coming from, okay, what is the note number, which is just uh, typing there. And also how can we use your managed solutions, not CBC. So the reasons behind uh, there are two reasons. Firstly, there are still customers who have um, implemented before the CBC comes and there's no conversion. Uh, the conversion is not really fully started. That's why we still have the manager solution and what Alan uses is actually an in internal systems. So I hope that uh, answers your questions for any of the new customers. Yes, only CBC, that's an option. That's so uh, uh, with yes. that, I would like to maybe move on to one of the questions, um, Yam, or Jen, whenever, like, uh, what, what if, if I call, call your name correctly? In the, thank you so much for taking the live, uh, really typing the first qu live questions in this call. And your question that has been already posed here is about can S1 Cloud for group, uh, S1 Cloud for group reporting to be implemented standalone, like without on other ERP functionalities? And how would like the headquarter and and I uh, think the the subsidiaries in integrated S1 Cloud system? Um, S1 assistant. So um, maybe uh, Aloy, I think you are going to answer this question live. Please go ahead. And if I learn if you have anything to be add, please uh, do so afterwards. 
appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, totally one of the scenarios that we have uh, for group reporting. Uh, you have the public cloud group reporting that is a, a pure standalone that you can use right on the go um, without having to implement the ERP. Um, you have scenarios where, of course, group reporting is integrated on top on a, of a S4 HANA, where you can leverage more features, more integration. Um, but yeah, the, the group reporting can be totally a standalone application. Okay, thank you so much. So, um, not can sure I add something? Can I add yeah, something? Please go here? ahead, and Jan, just feel free if you, you can raise your hand if yeah. you did not uh, answer your question, just raise your hand so that we can allow you to talk. Okay, go ahead, Alan. So, yeah, yeah. So, so again, yeah, I'd like to just uh, share quickly. Um, uh, because I think a picture will, will, will explain better, um, than words, uh, verbally. So, so just to Kind of echo what Eloy just mentioned. Could you could you see my screen here? My screen is very colorful yes. with a lot of, yeah. But but please just focus fo uh, focus on this picture. Yeah, by the way. So you see that the you know the core let's say the core consolidation component is is sitting in this S four Hana uh, box here, and here we have reporting. Yeah, we have the accounting. Yeah, both sitting in the same instance. And then you can see that on top of this central S4 instance, we are also integrated with let's say, the Google reporting data collection, GRDC. And indeed, this, let's say, this integration is uh, let's say, one of the main channels to bring in let's say, the non-SAP non -SAP data trial balance. Let's put it this way. Non-SAP trial balance yeah, coming from the subsidiary into Google reporting for consolidation purpose. And apart from, so because you're asking for, let's say the standalone. So apart from GRDC, if for some reason that you, you don't use GRDC, they are also delivered RPs or uh, for you to kind of implement from your source system. And in your source system, of course, if you use RP, you have to do your a little bit of your own programming. Right, uh, devising let's say your own uh, mapping or customizing tables. Right, well, well, how how are you going to map your geo account with FS item, or uh, what are the source fields for consolidation unit and and all those? So you have to implement it in your source environment, and then there is an RP. Just just um, think of let's say this GRDC as RP, and then with this RP, then you can also let's say transfer the trial balance from either let's say your OECC or non-SAP system into um, Google reporting. And another even simple method is flat file. Yeah, and, and we don't draw it here because flat file is no brand, right? Everybody could load the, you can load the CSV file um, with all the necessary dimensions, right? Into also into Google reporting for consultation. So, so the answer is yes, you can use uh, good reporting as a standalone. I think this might suit customers that are so used to running consolidation as a separate um, solution. However, um, you will lose, let's say, certain nice features, as you could imagine, right? Integration with the accounting, yeah, drill through, um, or even as a two-way visualize two-way visualization, yeah, of the accounting data. Either let's say uh, before consolidation, during consolidation, or after consolidation. So all these nice, all the trails or integration with the S4 accounting will not be let's say fully available if you transfer your trial balance, yeah, outside of this central S4 instance. So I think this is something that I like to just uh, share the clarity on um, let's say the pros and cons, right, of a different approach of bringing data. Um, into into consolidation, uh, let's say in Google reporting. Okay, back to you, Lily. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Alain, for the really detailed explanations. And anyone, what it comes to your questions, or if not, you, you want to have uh, some sharings, you know, from your end, just raise your hand so that you know, like our colleagues will mute yourself so that you know, so that you can unmute yourself and then talk, you know. 
um, for that. So thank you so much and really appreciate. I think next question comes from really Gregor. And um, thank you so much. You want to really share some of the experience on that you want to create an asset reporting and use our reporting rules. And now you ask if there are consolidation units like for the group that, that are not implemented in the system, you want to upload the data as well. And now we use the universal journals, uh, sub items are now assigned to the group journal entries. What will be really I think really, what is the logic between the posting in s hana and, and then now like what are the underneath logic that they are mapped to those sub items in the group journeys? And I love, maybe you pick it up first and uh, I learn if you can also add some, some comments there. And at the same time, if there are any questions, you know, that is posted there, I learn, just go ahead to click the answer live so that we know that you are accountable to, to pick them next. Thank you so much. So I, I, love, I will hand over to you. Yeah, okay. Um, so thank you, Gregor, for your question. Um, I'm, I might do some assumptions here because you're speaking about assets, you're speaking about sub-items. So I would think that this sub-items part uh, relates to the uh, movements uh, descriptions of what you had from an asset. Like you just have not the, the net variations, but you can have the increase, the decrease, and all that stuff that comes with the, the 900s. Uh, sub items that we say are on, on top of the one. Um, the thing is that this I sub items part is a brand new thing that comes along with S4 and group reporting. So by default, when you configure group reporting, you can assign sub items for yeah. entries that um, would not have this information. And when you post it, you will have, um, I would say, an automatic ass uh, assignment of a sub item, but this is not ideal. If you want to have a really smooth logic, you will align the GL's accounts, sub items information as for system. And then when you release the journal, you will have the corresponding FS items, which is the accounts part that GR will use to the GL, which is what you will have on the Acedoka, your general accounting elements. There will be a straight mapping, and we, while releasing that, you will have the exact same sub items on both sides, which guarantee you to have the correct information and also later on to do your um, the different reports, just like the cash flow and everything will flows correctly. If not, you might fall in the in the fact that some clients that I have uh, they don't have the general uh, entries for historical purpose, and then we go with a hurdle that we assign. Um, a default sub items, and then we have to pass some entries to reassign the content of those sub items, which is the 915, which is the net variations. But when it comes to assets, you need more uh, to identify depreciations and uh, write off and increase and decrease for gain and loss and such things. So I hope that answers your questions. Uh, otherwise, let us know and give us more uh, insights into, into that. Yeah, I know. I, I, I... I guess, like at least from my side, the, your voice is not that uh, loud and clear. Not sure if you can, oh. yeah, if yeah, if you can go, get a bit closer to the computer. But I sure. hope that um, uh, Gregor, that you get the main sense of it. And if not, do raise your hand and ask the questions further. Okay. And Alain, from uh, do you have something to add here on this? Uh, just a small question? thing, yeah, because. Yeah, just uh, add some small thing. Uh, although I think uh, Elo explained very well, the mapping, yeah, the mapping between the I say the movement type or transaction type in S four accounting and sub item in group reporting is actually a configuration, and there are two levels of configuration. Yeah, there's a simple mapping. There's a simple mapping between oh which um I say which um transaction type for example nine I don't know nine fifteen yeah from let's say from S four accounting is mapped to which let's say sub item used in the group journal in S four Hana uh, group reporting this is the first level on top of that uh with the preparation ledger yeah you know that with the preparation ledger you have some luxury uh of let's say doing this kind of real let's say, um, substitution, yeah. So with the group ledger, you could also um, add more kind of um, more sophisticated mapping uh, into the sub-item. Um, 
Otherwise, um, I think the basic mapping yeah, between the accounting sub-item and the Google reporting sub-item, it is sufficient yeah, for, I think, for most customers. So this is just something I'd like to add that these are configurable. They are not hard-coded. And of course, for the non-S4 uh, data, well, then what we tell customers that is that yeah, it's better because you need sub item throughout the whole closing process in, in, in Google reporting. Yeah, you need it for elimination, you need it for visualizing the if the, the report, you need it for audit trail. So for non-S4 data, of course, then you know you, you need to have it. You need to have it either in your flat file or also in your GRDC mapping, right? Or in your in your RP mapping and all that. So so this is a very fundamental element. Uh, before you could actually run the consolidation smoothly in, in Google reporting. Yeah. Back to you, Li Ling. Thank and, you and, so and, much. Yeah. yeah, moving on, I think the next one is really um, from Guan. I think that the questions is, uh, is um, could be very simple really here. Like, must it, is that a must really? Like, if you want uh, to upload the, the legacy system to be done via the preparation ledger, this, or it can be directly from our um, AC. ACDOCU. You can you can do both, as I mentioned, and and you know preparation preparation ledger is not really a let's say a must. Of course, it depends on when you start implementing Google reporting. If you start implementing it now, in, installing as the newest version of Google reporting, then you always you always have the option of. Um, let's say using the the preparation ledger, meaning that you 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 run this integrated um let's say uh, approach, yeah, and then you have all the all the trail you know the drill down. So that's the benefit. Um, you can as I mentioned earlier, you could also um you can also use GRDC or a flat file or RP to load data directly into other U. So I think this question goes back to the dia the dia the diagram that I showed earlier, yeah, with uh, uh with Google reporting in the middle and then connect it right with GRDC or, and then uh, through GRDC or flat files through to the let's say the non S4 uh, or non SAP system. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Maybe I, I share the same questions to Aloy because I think if you can add from your experience, you know, like I'm, I mean, you have been support near for a lot of group reporting implementations, and what is really the practicals in the, the reasons that you would choose, you know, each one, and what are the benefits that you see for your preferred one? Well, that that really depends on on what legacy systems you have. So that is mostly for non SAP systems. Uh, the preferred uh, way to go was to implement GRDC to directly load your information into the asset of you part. Um, some clients also have multiple SAP systems. So in this case, uh, we would have gone with preparation ledger because we just have uh, some elements that are quite common. So you can load it or mass upload. It really depends on, on, on which type of level you want to um, add also your information. Um, do you need to report on, on the, the general reporting uh, level? And, and there you want to go uh, for um, You see it's very far away from the volume? Okay, I'm, I'm so close to my face right now, so I don't know. Maybe I should talk louder. Sometimes my voice do that. Let me know. Is it better now? Yeah, better. Much better. Yeah. Okay, so I need to, to talk really louder. Um, so the idea here is, is where do you want to report also your data or you extract them for comparison purposes? Um, if you want to be um, directly from asset or cap, for example, this will be on general general ledger uh, elements, general accounting. Now, if you want to go directly for consolidations elements, uh, I think it's best to go directly for asset or Q part. And that's where GRDC has been implemented by my clients uh, most of the time. Okay, thank you so much. Next, um, let's move on, okay. I would say like, let's move on to the next question. Really, thank you so much, Michelle, to ask the questions. Um, yeah, and keep, yeah, guys, just keep in type in there and we will, um, 
sure of your questions either lively if we had the time or if not then we will follow up with you so the question is here is it, is it possible to really aggregate the data form periodically to the YT, ytd in this gd uh, gd grdc sorry aloy i think you're picking that this question alive so maybe you can continue there yeah so for grdc basically you have two modes uh, where you, you want to work. Um, you have to, to tell in which mode you are. So if you are in the periodic values that you want to implement, then you will load directly information in periodic mode in GR, and GR will handle the year-to-date on its own. Or you may say, okay, well, the data that I provide to you is already YTD. And in this case, um, GR will, will work itself to transform this YTD information uh, into a periodic for storage at some point and recalculate as well the YTD. So um, basically you have those two modes directly into uh, into GR and GRDC uh, together. And also the the data, no matter which mode yeah, that you enter or load the data through GRDC, once it's somehow, let's say, converted and stored into the good reporting table right under you is always stored uh, per period. Okay, so the data is stored, let's say period by period, yeah, in the table. And then uh, when you run the reports, yeah, um, anytime when you run, for example, the group data analysis, you can run a report either on the periodic mode or on the year to date mode. Yeah, so it's very flexible. Yeah, back to maybe leaving. We can't hear you, Lily. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, yes, now it's good. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just got a <laughs> reminder in the in the in the in the chat that's maybe better to put on a headset, and that's what I do, but somehow it's <laughs> muted myself. So uh, one of the questions that has been raised uh, from our uh, from our um, people is a lot. I think you have a question that has been hanging here there for a while. Thank you so much for your patience. This is the, the question that we will pick up. It's regarding um, the chart of accounts. So what factors should be considered for group, group reporting while designing the chart of accounts? And for so uh, it was asked the, the the third questions in our query right now. Should I take this one? I can take yes. this one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a very, very important. This is a very important question, yeah, because chart yeah. account, you know, no matter whether you're talking about um uh, operational or local close or let's say corporate close, you always have a <clears throat> you need to have a child account. And I think what's important, yeah, when you construct your your child account or in, in, in details, you know, the let's say the child, child account you use for let's say for consolidation purpose, you need to think about the properties needed for 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 each of these, let's say the you call it uh, we we call it FS item, yeah, in group report. You can think of FS item as a group um account, group GL account. So <clears throat> because when I say properties, for example, um, are we talking about, uh, let's say, the intercompany receivable payable account? Are we talking about, um, let's say, a, a, let's say an investment account or equity account? Or are we talking about a goodwill? So as you can imagine, I think most of us have very, very good, let's say, knowledge on, on accounting. You need to think about the properties, the properties that you need, um, let's say, for, for, for your, let's say, group uh, GL account. And the reason being that especially <clears throat> especially in Google reporting, um, we introduce a lot of very useful useful attributes in in the FS item um, to trigger the elimination. For example, uh, this receivable or payable account. Yeah, we have this um, we call that elimination uh, selection attribute uh, built into the FS item uh, master data. So if you if when you create let's say a new for example new intercompany receivable account, then you can simply just copy right from the content uh, we talk about the content. You can copy from the receivable account from the best practice content that already has the embedded uh, elimination attribute right 
also into your own your own let's say new intercompany receivable account. In that way, it will make sure that when you run the intercompany emanation, it will pick up right all the transactions posted to this new let's say um group account. So I think this is one example, and but I think this is the very most important um let's say um criteria when you construct. Uh, your let's say your child account, especially especially for consolidation purpose, think about the transactional nature of this account, and then you have to translate yeah this transactional nature into the various um let's say selection um attributes or elimination attributes or role. Maybe I can quickly also show you just you know so that we we won't bore you with so so much talk. I can quickly show you in the system what I'm talking about. Um, so I need to take over your screen. Yes, uh, thank Just you so much, Alan. Yeah, like while we were preparing, I think, uh, thank you so yeah. much. We really have a lot of questions here. I, if we can't make it to close it or during the session, we will all follow up and we will get, we will have a community link and we will follow up all of the open questions and then you were more than welcome to get an answer there. At the same time, we would be, and uh, after Ellen's answer to this question, we still have open 19 questions and we would like to really have a quick point here really on your understanding. Yeah, please go ahead, Ellen. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so you see that, you know, under the master data, we have this FS item. So that's the, group yeah geo account although there is no really technical um let's say link uh, needed yeah, there is a kind of high level link on the child account level you see for example if i look at the investment because this is the core well the core um let's say the, the the transaction yeah you see um for example here this is just the over page if you go to the detail you you can see a lot of um Attributes. Could you? I hope you could see properly. Let me try yeah, to yeah. blow it up. Right. Yeah. So you see, these are very important uh, properties, like the role here, the role here, and also the let's <clears throat> say the currency translation, yeah, and also the elimination. At least these three, these three properties will affect the core consolidation. Um, execution and they are also additional additional properties that will also influence how let's say this report is is picked up or processed or presented in the reports yeah for example that cash flow selection and um so this this is something and also one thing very important is that these attributes are time and version dependent so you can see that if you you could also view them right you can view them across, let's say, different period. Um, maybe. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I'm a bit. It's too big, so you can see. So you can view them, uh, across, let's say, the a uh, period or version, right? This is just uh, break it down by different periods. So you can see the changes of these, um, you know, all these different properties, right, over time. So I think this is the very let's say that the very important factor to consider. And then another thing, going back to the question about um, the, let's say the sub item is right above. Yeah. Uh, we also have the business content yeah, delivered for, let's say all the, the content FS item uh, with, let's say this, you know, the, the sample, let's say the sample um, sub item. And, and I think this is another factor that you also need to bring into this consideration when you construct your consolidation child account, because again, sub item is, is needed uh, for currency translation, for elimination and for reporting. But, you know, we have the best practice content that you can make use of. So I think this is good. Yeah. Well, back to you, yeah. Lily. <clears throat> yeah, thank you so much. Really, I, uh, we need to really rush it uh, because we, I think a lot of people now get in mode. Like, what does the community life work? And now that we have a really big pool of questions, so let's run it. Um, so I will, uh, I will launch a quick poll. Um, people, do take your time to put down your questions, uh, your feedbacks, your experience sharings there. Um, at the same time, we will pick up our next questions. Um, so, as has been pacey here, um, 
oh, this is really a detailed question. <laughs> so um, I hope our panels, Aloha, and uh, I learned if you can um, take a chance to look at the cases here. And then, yeah. Yeah, so very simply here uh, regarding the, the, the multiple consolidation, um, you have the capabilities to design different what we call scopes. That is, you will identify a list of entities um, with relationships to, to themselves, like you have other, you have subsidiaries. You will, you will say also if the subsidiaries are fully implemented, if they are at equity and everything, and you can at the same time uh, define multiple scopes, like your DEF will belong to C first, and then you will create another um, scope where DEF and ABC will be together as A as the mother. And then you will be able to run multiple consolidation uh, at the same time for these different groups. So totally, totally um, something possible to configure and very easy. Thank you so much. So yeah, go ahead. I think maybe we pick up in the next one if it is okay. So um, the next one is actually from Luigi. Uh, Luigi, is there any chance to have data in ingested from SAP data sphere through the G GRDC into our AC doc to you? So for that, yeah. uh, I don't ahead, know. Yeah. For now, uh, data sphere is not a source. Yet, but maybe Heidi have uh, things in the roadmap regarding that. It's not really a direct source. Yeah, um, that means that you somehow have to connect your data sphere to 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 GRDC, uh, which I don't know how. Um, I guess we're talking about the data warehousing cloud, right? If we're talking about data sphere, am I right? Yeah, maybe a little I think it may be better if you can um let, let yeah. me see if we can unmute you so that you know I, I know that you have you are very new to this question, let's paste it twice. But if you can really illustrate you know what are the backgrounds, what are the solu uh, the solutions that you are prefer to uh, to talk to, maybe you can bring us a bit more background. Yeah. Hello all. Hello, Hello. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking this question because I, I got uh, several clients uh, in the MIA region and in the, in the Middle East which are looking for a solution of integrated data sphere uh, for trial balance uploads from uh, non, various non-SAP companies uh, into group reporting. Uh, group reporting usually they are implementing first uh, of uh, the first up part of the solution before the S4ANA. So we are looking for a um, for a way to get uh, uh, the most from the data sphere, uh, since uh, it's usual from our customer that they require some transformations before not only uh, account mapping, but also uh, functional area mapping and the sub item mappings for the flows, because they expect to have uh, a PNL by by destination and uh, and a precise cash cash flow. That's why. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I think I can get back to you, you know, just to be safe. Yeah, although intuitively, you know, based on my understanding, either RP or GRDC could be connected to any system. It just depends on the work, yeah, the implementation effort needed at the source uh, to, to get this link uh, working. Um, but I can double check with my colleague in the GRDC team just to see is that a very expensive approach? Yeah. Do we really need GRDC in, in, in a picture? Well, I shouldn't have said that, right? Because I'm coming from, from the from SAP. Yeah. However, from the implementation can, point it. of view, uh, yeah, I'm pretty so sure there are other there, there may be other options. So let's take it offline and I'll I'll share I'll share my finding yeah with, with the team first and then we can share with you. Yeah, this is just part of a story because uh, as a, a complete solution, then uh, after the group reporting, there is the SAC for planning, no? So uh, basically the solution for that with the data sphere, group reporting and SAC is something that we are studying to implement for, uh, for build a, a complete and integrated solution that 
we hope uh, can replace basically all the features that we got for uh, with BPC, the, our uh, let's say old and familiar Excel uh, uh, consolidation tool. So, uh, are they using SAC for planning purpose or just yeah. for reporting purpose? Also for planning, okay. And, yeah. and do they do they have the need oh, for? What? Yeah, okay. maybe we can. Yeah, I think if, if it is, works sorry. for you, let's connect you both. You can have, you know, I learn if it's okay for you to take this forward. Sure, and sure. Uh, yeah. I agree if you are okay that uh, we will connect you offline. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So yeah, let's do that. Yes. Okay. okay, great. Thank you so much. I really want to share the chance to the others because um, I do have a I, I, I do have a question. I do have a question. How can I how can I post a useful link uh, in 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 this uh, forum? I'm trying to chat. find out. In the chat, in the chat, please. In the chat, please. And always we will share with uh, in the in the in the we can attach okay. in our PPT so that everyone else while we you having the link that you reject your sessions, you will get it. Okay. And next mm -hmm. one, I want to really move on to um you look, I think you have post you have raised your hand for a while. I hope that you're still here and I have, now you're allowed to talk. Is there something to, that you really want to share with us? <laughs> Hello, sorry. you're audible. We can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, by mistake it happened. I'm so sorry for that. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, no worry at all. No worry at all. So, and then, then I think really we have only three minutes left. This really time flies. All of the open questions, 16 questions. We will try to close it. We was here to Eileen and Eloy, if you can help there to type the answers. Uh, in this chat or just type answers, click the buttons and put down your links and the answers. And if we can't make it, we will always get back to you with our answers uh, later. And please do join in the link that uh, Chriselle has pasted in the chat. We have actually all of the community live sessions and all of the other sessions that we organize. We are trying to really have not only the live sessions with you, but we really want to have not only the one hour session, but keep on supporting you. And that is why we build up our partner only communities where you can answer questions and all of the panelists like me, Crystal, and also panelists like who join every session will be there to support your questions. So keep on placing your questions there and we will answer it surely. And the next one, uh, Crystal, if you want to share there are uh, there's before you leave. There are a quick scan uh, um, that we want you to to paste your feedback. Yes, yes, your feedback here to uh, tell you know, what exactly you think should be improved. And um, um, yes, do take the time also to paste really your your answers here. I think if, if this post is really your chance to influence our product backlogs. Elaine and the team will be very appreciated that you can put on um, your thoughts. Uh, I think there are already 13 people here who have already um, shared the stuff. Thank you so much. So, yes. And Crystal, if you can share the our communities, it will be really appreciated because that will be really the places that you, everyone that you can join in as partners and where you can really paste your questions. So yeah, the community link has been pasted and uh, I can probably share, uh, I put it in the chat box. So I can also maybe uh, just give you a glance of it. So if you go to community.scp.com and then the groups, right? The partner groups and under that ERP and finance and the public edition. So that's where you can post all your uh, questions. So you can go to line of business uh, for finance and here under the partner knowledge center, you can see all the uh, latest information uh, for your uh, uh, for your uh, reading from novice to professional level and finance Q&A where you can post all your queries over here. Yeah. Yes, um, maybe you can copy and paste the, the finance ones and into the chat. And thank you so much or for your joining. We will 
um, close it. And if you will be staying with us, I think uh, Alain and uh, Eloy, do you still have some minutes to pick up some of the questions? Oh, this, the slides will be shared in the exactly same link that you just our session. Okay. After, normally, after a week, you will find if you reject, do reject the sessions, you will have an SAP email inform you that the session has already completed and the deck is, is there to share. Okay. Um, okay. And Alan, are there any any top any questions that maybe we we follow up with you offline and let's let's get it done, you know, um, to get it all the questions answered later in community. If that is okay for you both, Alan and uh, Eloy. Fine by me, yes. Really, and thank you so much, or for uh, your interest here. If Alan, I, I think if are 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 we talking like the other day, saying if there are partners who really are interested, in, so you can really paste for people who has pasted their answers in the the long pool. You put you put your time to to really answer it. Uh, if it is. I think Eileen could reach out to you if you want to have some detailed discussion with them, right? Yes, that's also possible because coming from the product team, our goal is to also support um, consultants yeah, like, like you who are standing in the front line right, between the product and also the customer. So um, feel free to contact uh, me directly or indirectly. Yeah, I don't know how you could reach me or maybe with yeah, your help. Yeah, you can this always community. drop a mail. Right. Yeah, you can always drop a mail to uh, expertise service community. The the mail address I will copy paste to, and also for anyone who have answered poor lively, we will get your mail. And then we know that you are the one who are very interested in connect with our product support, and you do, you know, put effort to make it. So we, so you will be taking it. I think first priority for you, Alan, really, right? People who do Excellent. answer the long questions. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just to add, I have also posted in the chat the upcoming community live sessions. So please feel free to um, register yourself and join our upcoming community live sessions. So uh, you'll have to log into the partner edge portal first, and then you can click on the link. Uh, that's how you'll be able to register. So Vijay has posted that uh, the links aren't working for him, but then you'll have to log into partner edge portal first. And then once you click on the link, you'll be allowed to register. Yeah, I think maybe we can share our event calendar. That's even better because that is not only exclusive to the um, to the implementation fundamentals. Because I believe the attendees today are mostly very very senior. But uh, share our emails, and we will we could paste the links into together packaged into our PPTs, and later you will get it. No worry at all. That is actually the exact link that we have already packaged in, in the last slide. Yes, you always get it soon. Um, I think within within these two days. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Uh, we are almost top of the hour, and thank you everybody for joining. So, Liling, any last lines from you? No, thank, thank you everyone. so much. Thank Thanks you so everyone. much. If you. I see that you are, there are some questions regarding the refreshers. I think there are plenty of much information out there. Just join our communities and you will find a lot of sessions. And the fresh sessions are actually included as our prerequisitions. There are links that you can find a lot of recordings there for you as a refresher to onboard yourself. And then maybe better for, for you to join the next discussions with our product managers later. Thank you so much and appreciate your time and see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.